So in this segment, we're going to be talking about um, a, a journalist that works for LBC being arrested covering an eco protest, and then the um, police commissioner of that police force coming out with a really nonsensical statement about it. Um, his statement, I think, in my opinion, made things far worse. If he, you know, he should have just kept his mouth shut if he's going to say such dumb things. Um, but yeah, let's have a listen to what um, yeah, James O'Brien interviewing, uh, interviewing the um, journalist Charlotte Lynch has to say about this. Neither was she the only person to be arrested over the last couple of days. And, and the, the point seems to me to be that you were on a footbridge observing events when your collar, your proverbial collar, was felt by the police. So to talk me through the very first moments, presumably you thought it was going to be a relatively run-of-the-mill exchange. It would be a, what are you doing here, I'm doing this. So she was, yeah, she was detained for a few hours by police, so I'm going to skip some of the filler dozens of those exchanges hmm. with police and that is the you know they, she shows a press card the exact reason why i carry a press card and you show it to them and there's usually no further questions asked and they let you carry on uh, your way um i was the in fact the reason given for my arrest is that i was witnessed taking videos of the protester who was up on the gantry um i wasn't down on the motorway i was as you say on a bridge mm. over the motorway on a pavement i wasn't blocked. so her crime her alleged crime that's an awkward place to pause her alleged crime was she was videoing it now this is the stuff you see in america they do that you know if you if you film the police they they, they try and arrest you for it they don't do that in the UK. At least they shouldn't do. She was nothing, did nothing wrong. She wasn't involved in the protest. Uh, she was just filming it. Now uh, the police could have said, "Oh, we need to seize your camera for evidence of these illegal activities." That would be one thing, but that's not what they did. Blocking any roads, um, but no sooner had these two male officers approached me to ask um, who I was, and I'd shown them my press card and explained um, that I arrived uh, in a car to cover the protest, which was warned about the evening prior publicly. Um, a handcuff was banged onto my left wrist, and my phone was snatched out of my right hand. What did they say while they were doing that? They just said, "Right." We're arresting you on suspicion of conspiracy to commit a public nuisance. And then my rights were read to me. Because you knew the protesters were going to be there, the police extrapolate from that some form of collusion. Do you know that was never that was never explained either? Okay. That I think I think they just wanted a reason to arrest her. I think they either didn't believe she had press credentials or this were, I, I think, in my opinion, allegedly, um, <laughs> you got to couch this stuff because you don't get in legal trouble. But I think, in my opinion, some police officers on a power trip um, thought, oh, we'll just arrest her. You know, she must be involved somehow and we'll figure out the rest later. That, that's how I, I think they might have done it. I could be wrong, um, but it genuinely seems to be that case. Wasn't explained, but I mean, it's hardly a conspiracy when the protest group themselves uh, published the evening mm. prior that they were going to be doing that. They were also in a similar location the day before. And it's not it's not like she had some sort of secret knowledge about this, like the, the, um, the eco protesters were like, oh, we're going to be at this location. Can you come film it? You know, it's not it's not like that. It's the case that, you know, this was public knowledge. Now, I don't know if they put it on Twitter or what, but the public knew what was going to happen. Um, they, the eco protesters announced it. She wasn't secretly colluding with them. She obviously knew where to be because they, the protesters publicly announced what they were going to do. Um, and all it took was a quick call to their press team to get from them the evening before um, a round. You, you, you don't have to justify yourself no. to, to me well, or, no. or to anyone, uh, although obviously that wouldn't include these particular police officers. There is a number on the back of your press card from the National, I always get confused whether it's ACPO or the National Police Chiefs Council. The, yeah, the, National you, Police Chiefs Council. I mean it is actually part of the yeah, the package it, as it were. It so, says uh, yeah. the National Police Chiefs Council recognised the holder of this card as a bona fide news gatherer to ring and check this uh, oh ver to verify this ring this hotline, and um, that apparently took them five hours. Filming something being a fairly neat. That sounds like nonsense. Genuinely, you know, the fact that it took five hours it sounds like nonsense. Um, may maybe this hotline's understaffed. I don't know, but um, it would have been very easy, I think, for them to check her press credentials at the scene without detaining her if they really wanted to. But I don't think they wanted to, to do that, go by that route. I think they wanted to detain her. I don't know why. Um, I mean, confiscating her uh, camera, if she was using a camera, would be one thing. Um, but to, for them to take her phone without, um, you know, to confiscate her phone like that, I think is wrong. Um, especially because how she, you know, they should have allowed her to contact her lawyer. You know, how is it going to take her five hours, then five hours to sort that stuff out? It's an example of gathering news. Yes, absolutely. One would, one would imagine. Um,
it's a tr tricky question, really, but th do you think they were acting with a degree of autonomy, these officers, or do you think they had been told to round up reporters? Because it, it had happened to a cameraman and a, a, yeah. a photographer previous, the pre a documentary maker, I think Nick spoke to yesterday, it had happened the previous day. Yeah, yeah. I. Do you know what? They made three arrests yesterday, yeah. um, Hartford Chicken Stabbery 3, one of which was was myself. And I've covered these protests for a, for a long time, uh, all throughout October when they were demonstrating. And the police came under a lot of criticism for you know the mm. way they dealt with the protesters and the length of time it took. Now, they're, they're quite quick to then put out, well, we've taken this action and we've made all of these arrests. Now, three arrests looks better than two. Yeah in my opinion and it it just felt as though these officers wanted to make an arrest and the one other person they could have arrested who um, was up on the gantry they were in the process of of bringing down and where I was there were no other journalists there at that point the protesters were at different locations of the M25 and other uh, I think I think she's I think she could be right there the police were trying to make it look like they were doing something but by arresting a journalist all you do is make yourselves look stupid for a start you also bring more kind of awareness of the story. It's the Shrizand effect in a sense, um, because this video within a day got, I think, what, 100, 112,000 views, the, the LBC's video, I wish mine did that well. But point being is that more people become aware of the eco protesters and more people are interested to see, oh, what are they protesting and why? They might not necessarily support them, but these sorts of protesters, they love fame and notoriety. They want their, uh, They want more and more awareness of their protests. Um, you know, for their cause, etc. That's what they're like. And the simple fact is by them arresting a journalist, they do that. They bring more kind of um, awareness to the protesters' cause, but also it brings a lot more pressure down on the police force. Because the one thing that I think journalists do fairly well is they do try and stick by each other. Um, because in the day, no journalist wants to be arrested. They detain her for five hours. Now, that's a long time. That's a scary thought for someone who never thought they would be in that situation. I can't imagine what that feels like. So I think that for the police to do this is incredibly stupid. And if we cut to the, I think he's the police commissioner on uh, Nick Ferrari's show, which, you know, the fact that they didn't get this person, um, I, I would have brought her on. I would have brought on Sh um, Lynch. I would have got her to ask the questions instead of, um, you know, someone like Nick Ferrari, who I don't who I don't have a high opinion of. Um, but, you know, this David Lloyd guy, his, his statement's a joke. Police crime and commissioner for Hertfordshire. Um, whoever elected this guy, do better. Go, Commissioner. How would you characterise the behaviour, particularly afforded to my colleague Charlotte Lynch? Well, um, it strikes me, uh, although we've set up a, an independent inquiry to, to properly learn the lessons of it, um, it doesn't sound right to me. Um, it sounds to me as if uh, we got it wrong. I'm a huge fan, as you know, and we've talked about before, I'm a huge fan of a free press. That's what makes us different from uh, the rest of the world. We so most countries in, in Europe, um, or at least some of the countries in Europe, other countries in Europe, and the USA don't have a uh, free press, so it sucks to be you guys, huh? Because um, our press is so free, they get arrested covering a uh, protest despite them showing their press credentials. Yeah, free press, yeah. We need to continue to do that, and arresting journalists doesn't seem right to me. Um, uh, I don't have the, uh, the the benefit of having a, a full inquiry, which has come back to say exactly what happened, but at the moment it does Let, let's, let's put it this way. I would believe what she has to say over what any of the arresting officers had to say, I'll be honest. The fact that it is, she said she showed, them her, she showed the police officers her press card, um, they ignored it for whatever reason, and they arrested her. That's what seems to be the case. I'm surprised he doesn't hide behind the, oh, there's an independent inquiry going on, so I can't comment on it. If he was smart, he probably would have said that rather than saying, well, it doesn't seem to be uh, correct, does it? But, you know, his excuse at the end of this video is ridiculous. Uh, protests completely around the M25 and, uh, you know, they've got to make some split second decisions around what they arrest. It wasn't a split second decision because they had enough time to ask her what you're doing here and she showed them the press card. That's not a split de second decision. That's not a life or death decision. You know, she wasn't reaching for a gun or some ridiculousness that they'll come up with. Um, yeah, it's a joke, by the way. Um, but, you know, she wasn't reaching for a weapon. She showed them the press card and they were like, oh, and then they slapped the cuffs on her. That's not a split second. You know, she wasn't being a danger to anyone else. You know, based on what she said, she was in like a safe location um, trying to film the protest. This wasn't a split second thing. It's ridiculous to try and make that argument. Um, and that's why this guy, I, in my opinion, he's a joke. And if he's re-elected as a police commissioner, 
uh, Police Crimes Commissioner, whatever his title is. Um, yeah, the people of Hertfordshire, you're also a joke, let's be honest. Now, I know people don't take these sorts of elections seriously, but this is the guy you've got representing you. Um, I don't know how much power he has over the police force, but evidently he's a bit of a moron. He's no police commissioner Gordon, is he? Let's be honest now. And the argument he made there is just stupid. But um, anyways, before I'm at risk of rambling, let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, comment, share, subscribe, support the channel on Patreon if you can. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one.